Hey guys, Travis with Tech Raptor back at Gen Con 2016. I am with DC, the lead developer of the Dark Souls board game. We're about to jump into a demo. Yep. Take it away, DC. All right, so at the start of the game, your heroes have some starting equipment and they start exploring. There are different tiles than what you see here that are flipped over and then you do different encounters. We have a sample encounter card here that shows we're fighting some crossbow hollows uh, and an armored hollow. It also has a gravestone in that room. There's various uh, terrain features that impact how the battle plays out. And, uh, gravestones in particular allow you to learn information for farther along in the game. We definitely tried to keep things as close to the Dark Souls experience as possible, yet convert them into a board game friendly type environment. So the encounters that you go through allow you to earn souls, of course. Of course. And uh, using those souls, you can upgrade your stats. You see here that you, as a warrior, you'll start with the highest strength, but lower other stats, and you can upgrade them over time. Each tier of stats is going to cost you more, again, like the game. Uh, and you'll be able to use different equipment based on which stats you've chosen to upgrade. So as you find more treasure from the souls you collect, you can and the stats that you upgrade, we've already upgraded your shield here and your armor because we're going to show not just a regular encounter, we're going to show a boss fight. Awesome. So as you progress through the game, getting better equipment, better stats, you eventually find the fog gate, which takes you to this double tile for the boss fight section of the game. And that's the demo we're gonna run through. So we're gonna fight against the Dancer of Boreal Valley here. And each boss has their own behavior deck. And each time you play, you'll choose different behavior cards and shuffle them up. So you'll choose them randomly. You won't know quite what you're facing at first, but it'll be the same cards each time you go into the fight. So if you pay attention to what the boss is doing, just like in Dark Souls the video game, you'll be able to then, the next time you fight the boss, have some extra knowledge and hopefully be more prepared to win. Uh, you can also go back to encounters that you've already defeated by resting at the bonfire and fight them again to get more souls, to get more ready in order to hopefully defeat the boss. In the board game, each time you go back to the bonfire, it uses up what's called a bonfire spark, which is a token that you then remove from the bonfire. And if the bonfire runs out of sparks, you as a group have lost the game. So it is possible to fully lose, not just get frustrated and give up. Uh, we do have a fully cooperative game. No one runs the bad guys. They just use this uh, their behavior decks. And so we're all playing on the same side. We can have two of us, three of us, four of us, uh, and we work together to defeat the encounters we face. So we're gonna go ahead and run through a quick boss fight here. We'll put the aggro token uh, on the warrior, which you are playing. And these are not the final components. This will be an actual aggro token with Dark Souls iconography. And but this is what uh, we're using for, for the demo. The game is still in development. We have a lot of the character stuff done. We have a lot of the treasure done, um, but the final visuals are still in progress. And also there's a lot of expansion content that you might have seen on the Kickstarter. Uh, lots of big mega bosses to develop still. Lots of cool special experiences that add on and enhance the game experience. So when we enter the boss fight, the first person to activate is going to be the bad guy, the boss. In this case, the dancer of Boreal Valley. We flip over the boss behavior card, and this one says that the boss will move forward twice, pushing away anyone who's in the spaces that it will move through. So we move forward one node, we move forward a second node, very aggressive start, and then the Whirling Blades behavior attacks all four arcs, front, left, back, and right, up to one space away. So all of these nodes are covered by this attack. So right off the bat, we're going to need to defend ourselves. So as the warrior, we're prob you're probably going to want to dodge this attack, since your armor has a total, looking at the different dodge on each of your equipment things, a total of two dodge dice, and you only need one dodge to come up as a dodge face in order to avoid it. And so I have some blank faces that are going to be whiffs, yep. and these are going to be my dodges. So. Yep, so you just need one. Oh. Oh, that was unfortunate. <laughs> so uh, the, the odds are very good of you succeeding on that, but in this case you did not. 
Uh, so it, as in Dark Souls video game, when you dodge, you are going to roll. So go ahead and move to any node you want that's adjacent to the node you're on. So to any of these spaces around where you are now. Well, I'm going to try to flank the boss, I suppose. That so seems like a good plan. But you have taken some damage. So we are going to mark damage coming in from one side. And we also mark stamina coming in from the opposite side. So your stamina and damage, if there's ever no blanks between them, that's when you die. So the stamina will come in from here as you do things in the game, uh, and the damage will come in when you get hit. Uh, I am also in the area, so I'm going to choose to block instead because my the equipment that I have now, I'm better at blocking with my shield than I am at dodging out of the way. So I've got a blue die of, of block and a black die of block. Uh, nothing on my weapon, but my shield has some and my armor has some. So I roll those dice and I've gotten two pips to come up, so I'm only going to take three damage instead of five. Again, marking it in from the right side. And then the first player character gets to go, so you're going to go ahead and get to attack back. All right, so I guess I'll take a swing at the boss from where I'm at. Um, so we're going to actually move into the same node. We don't have giant long swords like the boss does. Oh, I see, okay. So moving one node is free. If you want to move more nodes to like run into a better position, moving extra spaces costs one stamina each, which we would mark on the stamina track. In this case, you're already right next to the boss. So yeah, go ahead and just move in a little bit and go ahead and take a swing. You can either for zero stamina, use just one blue die, which does have a lot of successes on it. Or if you spend three stamina, you can use a blue die and a black die, which is not quite as good as the blue die is. So I think if I use three stamina, that'll probably put me pretty close to death, so I might just go with the blue die. It will, but you also, once per boss encounter, you can also use your Estus Flask. So it's a little early to use it, but you also have taken a lot of damage. So if you used your big attack, and you're like, all right, we need to, we need to get this clear so the warrior doesn't die, you could use your Estus Flask right away and clear all of it. So that would be one option, or like you said, using the smaller attack to be a little more conservative until we know what the boss is gonna do. Well, I think I'll go for broke, why not? All right. So I've got a blue die and a black die. Correct. So three damage to the boss. Uh, we are going to have dials in the final game that you can just turn to, to new health. Uh, for now, I'm marking it on a card, but you have done some damage to the boss. We mark that off and then the boss goes again. It's important to note that this deck will not change for the duration of this fight. Oh, yeah, please mark My your stamina. three stamina. And do you want to Estus now? I think it'd probably be a smart thing to do. Uh, I think you're right. So. Yep. And in the game, will I have a token representing my yes, Estus Flask? Exact, exactly right. Yep. And it includes stamina, too. Oh. So just complete full heal, but only once. Okay. So. Uh, we now go to the next behavior, and these are going to keep going in the same order. So if we get through the whole deck, we'll then do them in the same order. So we want to remember the first thing that happened is a fast move straight forward, not towards anybody, just straight, uh, and then a big swing all the way around. Uh, this one's a little similar. Again, it's just a move straight forward with a push. So you're pushed out. Do you want to go here, here, or here? Um, I think I'll just come back here. All right, one space forward, and I am now pushed here, here, or here because of the arc markings. Uh, I'll go to, I will go to the, I will move to this side because the boss is going to be weak on the left. So I want to get closer to the left arc. But now this one's not green all around like that first one was. It's not a huge sweeping swing that'll hit everyone will only hit the right arc and the front arc. So it goes here, through here. So I am still in the way, but I've gotten closer to that weak arc. Uh, it's a dodge of just one, but a power of seven. If I try to block, I can take the damage down some. If I try to dodge and fail, I could die. I guess I'll block. I might wind up using my Estus Flask really early too here, but maybe I'll roll high and block a lot of this damage. Let's see. Block four of the damage, so I take three. One, two, three red cubes get added. And now we know what that behavior is. 
And to strike back, I think I'm going to do the same thing you did. I'm going to move into the weak flank. And because it's weak, I get an extra die. My weapon's not quite as strong as yours. Instead of a blue and a black, I only have two black. But the weak arc means I get an extra black die. So I am going to go ahead and roll these three dice, trying to get lots of skulls. Not too bad. Three more hits. And that's going to cost me three stamina. But even though it's still pretty early, with only one empty box, I think I'm also going to Estes. And we're now in a pretty vulnerable state for this early in the battle. So the boss will go again. Next behavior card. This one is towards the nearest... Oops, the aggro token moved to me because I attacked. Okay. Um, goes towards the nearest person, which is me. And this time it does push away. So I'm going to be able to, you have some control over the boss's movement when it's chasing you. And so I'm going to move away, pushed out, and as it follows, I'm going to keep getting pushed in a matter so that now you are in the arc where it's going to be weak. So the boss is going to get me, but hopefully it'll set you up for a good tack back against him. Uh, this is only a five with a two dodge, so I have literally no chance of dodging this because my armor's heavier than yours but i can block it let's see how much of that five i can block blocked a nice healthy four of it only take one damage oh we've got this now we're in a good position we're gonna be fine uh and so you're up well i'm gonna move the aggro back to you so you can attack in that weak arc yeah so i want to be in the damage. right arc here yep so i will move into the right arc you got it and i want to take a big swing Okay. So I'm gonna use my I'm gonna use three stamina here to go with the blue and a black die and, and hope for the best. Plus a black for oh. the weak arc. Excellent. Boom! Four more damage. So go ahead and mark your stamina. And we go to the next card. It is a grab. Moves straight to the left one. Oh, so it's gonna kind of leave you behind, but. It will now attack whoever has the aggro token if they're within one space, which you still are. Uh, so it'll attack you for a total of six. And would you like to dodge? Dodge, you need two successes this time, or block. Well, based on how I rolled on my first dodge, <laughs> I think I'm gonna try to block this one. All right, so we've got two black dice for you. Uh, one, so one on your shield and one on your armor. Yep. Okay. Three successes. So I so blocked three of the six. You got it. And after that attack, it is now the Herald's turn once again. So I get the aggro token since I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to show something now. I'm going to use my free move to go in to the front arc. But uh, I want to get to that weak arc. It's weak on its right side. So I'm going to spend another movement, which will cost me a stamina, to kind of rotate around the boss. So I'm going to move one zone over, one arc over. If I wanted to get to the back, it would cost me another stamina as I'm kind of evading and going around the boss, kind of circling as people have seen in a lot of the different Dark Souls fights. Uh, and some bosses have more weak spots or in different positions than others. Each boss fight is different, so definitely pay attention to the moves that a boss is doing, where its weaknesses are, and that will, is what's going to allow players to gain an advantage and have that kind of learning experience that's so central to the Dark Souls video game of, okay, this first time I didn't quite get it, but each time I'm learning something more, eventually being able to take that accomplishment of defeating a very difficult opponent. So I've reached the weak sign. I'm gonna roll my two dice, plus one for the weak arc, and try and get this boss down a bit farther here. And we definitely do. Four more damage is just enough to get to the heat up. A lot of the bosses in Dark Souls have elements where something in the fight changes after a fixed amount of time. Uh, those who remember the smelter fight with the giant flaming sword that goes into the flaming gullet of the guy, comes back out, and then suddenly the attacks are more powerful, more difficult. And it's that type of thing that happens in our boss fights as well, where now we're going to be adding in the heat up card. This card is more dangerous than the ones we've already been fighting, and it means we reshuffle the deck. So even if we've memorized the order, 
we now lose track of where that is. And I've accelerated the fight a little bit for the demo. Normally we'd probably go through the deck a little farther before the heat up, but we're speeding things up a little bit to just kind of showcase all of the different mechanics of the fight. So this represents the boss essentially taking the same moves, but maybe uh, altering its movement pattern, etc. Altering the movement pattern and also then often having additional move set. So in this case, we added one random heat up card from the dancer's three heat up cards. And so even if you fight the same boss multiple times, it'll be different. Different starting moves, different heat up card. Some of the bosses heat up different ways, like the, the smelter that I mentioned. His whole deck gets replaced with the fiery sword deck instead of the base sword deck. So a lot of things that we're doing to try and showcase each of the different bosses in their own way. Uh, so now we have new behaviors and we would continue to fight until we are able to defeat the dancer or both of our heroes are defeated. Uh, on your turn, we'll, we'll do one last turn real quick to show that you do heal some stamina each turn, okay. just like in the game. Uh, you gradually recover your stamina, uh, but the only way to heal your damage is with a, ca a character who has spells that heal damage or through your Estus Flask, which we both already used. So we're probably on track to lose this battle, <laughs> but hopefully people have enjoyed seeing how the boss mechanics work. Uh, and are, do you have any questions about... Yeah, so in, in the case of the heat up card, mm -hmm. if the boss wipes the floor with us, which it probably would end up doing, and we come back, does that heat up card stay in or does it come back out until we've dropped the boss again? It comes back out because the boss heals back to their full health each time. When you re-enter an encounter, the grunts are back again. When you re-enter a boss fight, the boss has full health again and their base move set again. So you have to kind of start over each time, just like in the video game. And if it defeated us before it heated up, would the deck stay in the same order that we'd already seen? Yes. The gravestones that are in some of the encounters, like the one that we saw, also allow us to look at some of the cards before the battle starts. So we are able to kind of get a little bit of a leg up at the beginning of the fight if we've explored earlier, rather than just kind of charging in heedlessly. And if we miraculously pulled this battle out, what would our rewards be for dropping the dancer? So there is special equipment that you get for defeating the dancer. Uh, there is also the possibility of you can play in different ways. So the normal base game, you're going to do some exploration and then fight a mini boss. And then you're going to do some additional exploration and then fight a main boss. If you like, you can continue going through to, to another main boss or even to one of those mega bosses. Uh, but each time you defeat a boss, you get more equipment, you get uh, souls to level up, you get uh, also the ability to put new cards into the deck. Each of our characters has kind of starting equipment cards that help form the treasure deck and then post mini boss treasure cards that have more powerful things that we really want to find that'll help give us a leg up. And so is each run through going to be standalone or are players characters going to be persistent at, uh, across multiple sessions? So the base game is designed so that you've got uh, an experience that you can tailor the length. If you want, you can just fight kind of from the start of the game to a mini boss and that'll only take you about an hour or so. So you can just play it fairly quickly, maybe even on a lunch break or something. Um, but if you play through a bunch of encounters, defeat a mini boss, through a bunch more encounters, maybe then a couple more times to get some more souls, then fight a main boss, have to go back to the bonfire, do that again. The full game experience is more like two or even two and a half hours. If you want to do something that's more of a campaign, we are going to have a campaign system as well so that you can play over multiple nights. And that way, whatever type of experience you're looking for, whether a persistent ongoing thing or just a on my lunch break, gonna play one game, you can tailor that to what you need. So there are quite a few people that are super excited about this game uh, based on your Kickstarter. When can people expect to be able to get their hands on the game? So the base game and the expansions that were unlocked as stretch goals with the base game, that's all going to launch in April. Late backing is still available. So people who didn't back on the Kickstarter but are excited about the game, if they back it now, uh, going to steamforge.com, they can, or just searching Dark Souls Kickstarter, it will also work. Uh, but you can get on the late backing, which will get you the full base game and the first six expansions for the price of the base game. So that is still available. 
and that will ship out to everyone who backs it or late backs it in April. Uh, and then it will be in retail stores that did the retail backing right away, uh, and retail stores that did not, it'll be about a month later. Excellent. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Keep an eye on techraptor.net for more info on the Dark Souls board game.